And they said, basically, you know, it's like if I was a furniture maker and someone asked if I could get them, give them the price to build a deck. You know, sure, I've got all the tools that are necessary to do the job, but if I say yes, you're probably not gonna be happy with the result. I'm not gonna be happy doing the work. So I just say no to those types of jobs, right? Even if they're, if there's good money involved. Hey there, Rafi Salzar from Rehab U Practice Solutions, and this week we're talking about positioning, one of my favorite topics, especially in healthcare. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> Do you want to differentiate your healthcare technology, your device, your software, or even your healthcare practice or business from your competitors? Do you want to align your solution, your software, your service, whatever it is, with your targeted healthcare buyer? And do you want to create a consistent message that drives business in the form of qualified leads and sales calls? If the answer is yes, check out the Positioning Alignment Workshop, where we help you and your team develop the basically the foundation upon which you're going to build all of your marketing, your sales, your advertising strategy around. We basically help you answer the question of value to whom. Once you understand who your best targeted buyer is in healthcare, what the actual thing that you're providing them is that they consider valuable, then you can build basically everything on that, right? Um, but you need to understand what's the value I'm creating, um, how does it resonate with my target audience, and what what piece of what I'm offering is actually the valuable piece. So we can help you do that. Check out positioning.rehabupracticesolutions.com for the healthcare positioning alignment workshop. That's positioning.rehabupracticesolutions.com. All righty. This week, we're just going to dive right in. It's going to be a bit on the shorter side because we're here in the at the time of this recording. It's the uh, Thanksgiving week holiday time of year, and I just don't have much time, right? So <clears throat> I want to talk specifically about positioning in healthcare and how it helps solve one of the two spectrums that most people find themselves on, right? Either I don't have enough business or I have too much business, right? Um, either of those can be a problem. Either you've got a, a wait list and that's causing um, issues from patient engagement and customer satisfaction, if they're waiting too long, uh, maybe it's even a software device and your onboarding process takes too long, right? Or not enough. People just don't know. They're not coming into the clinic. They're not you know, signing up. They're not booking calls, whatever it is. How does positioning solve that problem? So I was talking to a lawyer friend of mine the other day, maybe a couple weeks ago at this point, and we were talking about business and growth and kind of what they've done with their business, what I've done with my business, kind of the size of the team and feeding the machine and the, the whole nine yards. And um, we were talking specifically about how this lawyer has pared back the number of cases they open every every year and the, the number of people on their team. And they said something in passing, which I thought totally exemplified both the, the concept and the power of a strong positioning strategy. So we were <clears throat> talking about the specific types of cases that they open. And I was I said something like, oh, do you do XYZ as well? Because, you know, it's kind of in the same vein, but maybe it's a little different. And they said, basically, you know, it's like if I was a furniture maker and someone asked if I could get them, give them the price to build a deck. You know, sure, I've got all the tools that are necessary to do the job, but if I say yes, you're probably not gonna be happy with the result. I'm not gonna be happy doing the work. So I just say no to those types of jobs, right? Even if they're, if there's good money involved. <clears throat> and I know I've said this before on interviews, but for me anyways, I totally get where this person's coming from because I know for a fact the worst deals I've put together um, in my consulting or my business career, the worst clients I've worked with, the worst results for clients that I've provided, um, the most stressful projects, they all have come from me saying yes when I should have said no, right? And that's what a strong positioning allows you to do. One, it gives you the confidence, but it also gives you the clarity on when you say yes and when you say no, right? Um, like I said before, the ability to say no really increases the value of your yes. So again, if you're trying to build this position of you know, authority or leadership in your industry and you're saying yes to everything that comes along, it also undermines your credibility. So um, 
in healthcare, we kind of intuitively understand this from a like a clinical classification or specialization standpoint, right? Orthopedic surgeons are not treating cardiology patients. Nephrologists are not treating, you know, joint and arthritic uh, arthritis patients, right? Um, so we understand intuitively the the need for specialization, right? However, within each specialty area, there are countless subspecialties or subspecializations. For example, we'll talk about physical therapy because, you know, I own a physical therapy practice and this just makes sense. So oftentimes when I'm talking to practice owners, um, each of them basically have, a, have one of these two problems, right? I either have too many referrals and I got this wait list um, and I don't know how I'm going to get everybody in or... Um, I don't have enough referrals and, you know, no one seems to know where I am. I can't drive leads, whatever it is. Interestingly, no one I ever talked to says, we're good. We have enough referrals. We're going to keep on trucking the way we're trucking. It's either too many or too little. So how does positioning solve both of these problems? Um, I like to say basically positioning is the the guide, if you would, the filter through which you can screen potential clients or prospects in the event that you have too many, right? Let's start with the too many because that's easier to handle. A lot of times in healthcare practice, you know, some subspecialties, you're just going to wait a long time, right? Like my, uh, we have a patient in the clinic, we're trying to get them seen by a, a neurologist for some further evaluation, and it's three months. And that's not, you know, that's just the way it is with, with neurology here, at least here in our geographic region. I know some places it's like if you want to go see an orthopedic surgeon, you're waiting a little bit. So it just depends. There's, so there's some level of wait time that's necessary. And that in and of itself kind of puts this um, aura of specialization, right? It builds the authority and the credibility. You're going to listen much more to a clinician who you had to wait a little bit for to see because obviously they know what they're doing. That's why they have a wait list, right? So there's some of that involved. But if that wait list gets built out too far, you've got patients that will either go somewhere else, which may or may not be a problem if you've got a wait list. But what they might do is they might go to their referral uh, referring uh, physician or provider and say, listen, you referred me to ABC clinic down the road. They've got a six month wait list. I just can't do that. And in the mind of the referral partner, they're saying, oh, you know what? Maybe I should stop sending as many patients because they're booked out so far. So there is a little bit of management that you want to have there in how long it takes you to get people from referral to in the clinic. The same can be true of healthcare software um, and devices and things like that. You want it to be pretty immediate on the software side, right? Like you don't want to have to wait three, four weeks to get onboarded. Um, obviously, EMRs and things like that are a little different. Um, but you, again, you want it to be timely and you need to figure out within your market, where is that sweet spot for timeliness? Once you figure that out, how do you solve that problem of we're getting past that? We're getting beyond that. The easiest way is to really dial in your positioning. So again, let's take physical therapy because that's what I'm doing. Um, that's what I own the, the practice and that's kind of where we get most of the, uh, the examples are going to come from. But let's say you've got a quote unquote physical therapy practice, right? And there's a wait list of referrals. If the provider has not designated a positioning or specialization of any kind, they're just a physical therapist, um, there's a stronger chance that the, the wait list can get bigger, right? Um, so the way you trim it down is you start thinking about what is that thing that I want to be known for, that we want the practice to be known for? What's the best types of patients that we get um, results for? Where's our clinical specialty lineup? I know I've written, I wrote an article about this way back in the day, 2017, 2018. I might link to it in the show notes. I think it was called um, What Next? Um, how to build uh, your strategy for clinic growth or expansion or something like that. And it was basically the idea of understanding your clinical expertise, the market demand, and um, clinical expertise, market demand, and the availability or the, the capacity, right? And figuring that out and dialing that in to understand what the next service offering you were going to uh, create for a business. The same thing, though, needs to be taken into consideration when it comes to understanding the wait list time and managing the too much work problem. So... If you've got this practice and you've got a handful of clinicians and let's say 
for whatever, if you have a selected specialization, let's call it concussion or something like that, concussion recovery, and you have more referrals than you have capacity to handle, you simply take all those excess referrals that don't fit in that stated specialization and you refer them out to other providers, right? Um, and what that does is two things. One, it makes the patients happy because they're not on the wait list anymore. Um, it makes the referring provider happy because their patients are getting seen in a, in a, in a timely fashion and they'll think of you with more respect in your area of specialization, which means you'll probably end up driving more of those specialized referrals that you want, right? Um, that's kind of the easiest way to go about explaining how positioning helps with that too much work problem. It just makes it easy to cut those referrals that you shouldn't even get in your in your clinic anyways, right? And a lot of times, I understand it, if you're starting a business, um, you're just starting a practice, something like that, any patient is a good patient because you need to keep busy. You need to, as my dentist friends say, if you're not drilling, you're not billing, you need to have a, a little bit of volume. But the reality is you're quickly going to come to the understanding of these are the types of patients that I do really well with. These are the types of patients, for whatever reason, are miserable to work with, or I don't get the results that I know I should be getting for them. They're not happy. I'm not happy. That whole idea, right? So that solves the too, um, too many referrals issue. How does it solve the too few referrals issue? Um, basically, it solves it like this. <laughs> if you don't have a stated positioning, one of two things happens. Um, and they're, they both usually happen at the same time. You either reach out to everybody who could potentially refer you a patient or send you a business, and you're basically begging for work, which never is good from an authority and uh, specialization standpoint, right? Um, and what ends up happening is that you come to these referral sources and um, you say, listen, I'm, we're just, we just opened up a clinic, whatever, give us your patients. And the referring provider is going to say, okay, well, what kind of patients do you like working with? Any patients. We'll take any patients. We just need patients. Um, and in the mind of the referring provider, you're already lowering your status, if you would. If you came in, even if you were bleeding for work, you needed work really badly, and the patient came, you, you went into the referring provider and said, I only want to work with patients status post you know, a concussion within the first, you know, four to six weeks of their concussion because we really work on this protocol to kind of improve their outcomes or whatever. In and of that, in and of that self, just having that um, stated positioning in the mind of the provider says, okay, the referring provider says, okay, this person really knows what they're doing, that they understand where their target is, where they provide the best value, and you're already elevated in, in their mind for when they have that patient that has... Um, the the concussion for example but what it also does is subconsciously they're already thinking of you in a higher level so when they do have another patient that maybe is ancillary to that specialization or could be you know maybe they could also work with you on you know their neck pain or their back pain or whatever it is you're going to come to top of mind quicker um, because you've already established some credibility in the way that you 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 stated your positioning um the other way on the side of patients, when you talk about positioning and what that can do to increase referrals, oftentimes when the schedule gets light, clinic owners and managers reach out to anyone who could possibly come in and be seen by them. And it, it does harm in, in two ways, like I said. Patients don't get the best results because you're, by nature of just taking anybody, you're taking patients which you should not take, right? For whatever reason, you're gonna give them mediocre results, you don't have the specialty, it's gonna cost you more in time and energy, and that's something that is often overlooked in that if you take patients or take clients, for example, that are outside of your stated specialization or your competency, it's going to cost you more time, energy, and resources to skill up to be able to see them, right? Which causes stress on the team, it causes stress on your administration, it lowers your margins, all of that. So the, the, the question is, what is more important? Is getting any patient in or any client in or is getting the right client and the right patient in? Because I would argue that if you pull in referrals that are inappropriate, um, that are for whatever reason not your best fit, um, from a competency standpoint, then you're going to 
deliver subpar results, which means those patients and those clients are not going to have a good experience or likely will not have a good experience. Maybe they'll have a mediocre experience at best, but either way, it doesn't do you any good. They're not going to refer you to their friends, families, neighbors, or other business colleagues if you're in the B2B space. So you want to make sure that you're accepting and marketing to really those patients and those clients that you can provide the best value for, the, the, the better results for. And then the other piece about, well, if I go super narrow, and I hear this a lot from people, if I go super narrow or super specialized, all of these other people that we could see won't reach out to us. And the reality is that's just not simply not true. Um, I happen to believe, especially in healthcare, there are more people that need services than there are providers to provide services. And what ends up happening is usually through your marketing, your content, your um, your stated positioning, the people that are going to want to work with you will do the mental gymnastics in their mind. They will rationalize why you are the person to see, even if you're, they're not inside your specialization. Simple example. Um, let's say you treat um, patients with neck pain, for example. That's, you, that's your specialty. Um, neck injuries, whiplash, motor vehicle accidents, whatever. Th that's your specialty. People with neck pain, recently sustained neck injuries. You will have somebody, undoubtedly, that reaches out to you and says, hey, I know you, you, your website says things about neck, um, you know, cervical spine dysfunction. I was in a wreck the other day, and my thoracic spine and my lumbar spine got injured. You know, I figured they're all connected. Let's make an appointment, right? Or maybe they might even ask, is that something you do? In which case you say, sure, yeah, this, if the schedule's light and we got the capacity to do it, yeah, absolutely. It's within our skill set. We'll be able to provide you um, adequate outcomes. You're going to you're going to benefit from it, um, even though it's not in our quote unquote specialization, right? Our stated specialization. So oftentimes I feel like people are very um, quick to to try to go super, super broad with their positioning because they, they fear missing out on those potential opportunities. But the reality is that by going narrow in your, in your positioning, it allows you to attract and to market to those people that you would provide the best results for, and then it allows you to choose whether or not you do work with some of these outliers, right? Maybe it does fit. The timing is right, capacity's there, you know you can provide the outcomes, so you could you go ahead and you book that patient or you sign up that client or whatever it is. But in times where you've got too much work and not enough capacity, it makes it very easy to, to for team members and for business development folks to just cut out those referrals and those potential clients that you shouldn't be working with. So um, that's just a few very, very quick thoughts on positioning, why it's important, um, how it helps solve those problems of uh, too many referrals or too much work or too little work. Because again, destination determines direction, as Jim Rohn says. And if you've got a stated specialization and positioning, it just provides a lot of clarity for your business development folks, for your marketing folks, because it just highlights and makes it very clear who should we be reaching out to? Who who do we provide the best um, clinical outcomes or the best business results for? Um, who fits within our team's capacity and our skill set and our competencies? Um, and then everybody else, we don't even need to bother worrying about. So if, you, if you're in a position of having um, maybe limited budget for marketing, you don't want to do a spray and pray uh, marketing strategy. You want it to be very targeted, whether you're reaching out to referral partners or re reaching out direct to clients and consumers. Targeted is going to be the best use of your of your financial resources for the marketing and the business development. And if you're very, very broad in your positioning, you're diluting all of that effort and all of that work. So again, specialization, positioning helps narrow and focus that, which makes you more efficient with your marketing, your business development activities. It makes you, puts you in a place where you're providing the highest value services to your most valuable um, clients or patients or customers. And it makes everybody at the end of the day happy because if you are, if you have the ethical uh, backbone to refer somebody away, you're going to build goodwill with that specific perspective um, customer, if they came to you from a referral source, from that referral source, if you referred them to somebody else, maybe a, a 
competitor or a colleague or something like that. You're going to build goodwill in that colleague. There's just a lot of positives that come forth from, you know, turning people away that are not inside of your uh, designated positioning. Now, obviously, there's there's some balance there. You need to make sure you're you're managing your business and your finances in a way that allows you to do that. But the goal should always be to stand upon a solid positioning so that you're you're not in a position or in a in a situation where you have to take those clients that you know you're going to underperform for or that won't be happy with the services you provide. Okay, um, that's all I've got. Like I said, very quick one this week. If you like the show head on over to iTunes, leave us a rating and review. Again, if you want help on positioning for your healthcare business, check out positioning.rehabupracticesolutions.com for the Healthcare Positioning Alignment Workshop. It's basically a 90-minute workshop. Your team will sit down with me and my team, and we will help you identify those high-value services, the most valuable thing you provide to customers and clients. We'll help you identify that targeted healthcare buyer, the economic buyer of your services, and then we'll help you craft that positioning strategy so that you can target it, um, so you can actually target those uh, those buyers in your marketing, in your business development strategy, in your outreach, um, and even in your content. We'll even talk a little bit about content planning and content strategy given your healthcare buyer, right? So if that's something you wanna learn more about, um, check out positioning.rehabupracticesolutions.com. If you want to listen to more of the show, you want to listen to some of the past episodes, you can go to betteroutcomes.show. You can also sign up there. There's a link, um, a little form. Fill it out, and we'll send you an email as soon as we drop uh, a new episode. It's usually every other Wednesday. Um, any kind of bonus episodes and stuff like that will also be will hit you up on that on that list as well. And if you're interested in uh, being a guest or you have somebody that that you want us to interview for the show or you have a topic you want covered, uh, go to betteroutcomes.show and fill out the form at the bottom of the page. Um, we're always looking for, uh, for new and interesting guests and topics and topic areas. I know at the beginning of 2025, I really want to do a series on data and the value of data um, and how we can use it both to make clinical decisions, but then also business decisions. So if you know anybody in that space or you are in that space of data analytics and healthcare data, reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you about coming onto the show and, uh, and doing an interview. So that's it for me. Uh, until the next time, be safe, be healthy. I will talk to you then. 